All right, guys, so I'm going to teach you how to color your cartoon using Krita. Uh, you'll see some people on the internet call it Krita. It depends on where in the world they are from, for the most part. So I'm going to go File, Open. And when I look in here, I've got these pictures. They're not bad. Uh, they are definitely the pictures that I just took with my phone. Um, but I want one that's a little cleaner. So in my phone, not only did I crop it, but I used the edit tools to kind of pump up my lines a little bit so it'll be easier to work with. Okay. Um, I also kept the quality of this one up a little bit so that it wasn't going to be too small to work with or upset me. Um, these are the selection tools down here with the dotted lines. You also have this thing that looks like a magic wand. Every other program calls it a magic wand. Here they call it the contiguous selection tool. Uh, I'm gonna, this over here is the navigator. This is how I'm gonna look at or zoom in or move through my pictures. So I could zoom like this in and out, and then I can grab this box when it's small. Uh, you can't grab it when it's full screen, but you can grab it when it's small, and I can kind of move it around to see where things are. Uh, I do notice I did not ink that line, so I will have to come back and mess with that. When I click it, all the black lines that are touching get clicked, but not all the lines are touching. So I have to hold shift and I have to go and click all the other lines here. So any other lines that are not connected, I have to click them individually. Hopefully your, line, your drawing uh, has a little less line work. The thing about it is, um, if you have a lot of line work, maybe you're also more comfortable doing this. So I'm gonna keep going through and getting all my lines. Again, everything that's connected should get uh, done without having to keep clicking it. So let's see what I got up here. Everything's done up here, except for the hand. Got a little line on the hand. Taking my time, because what'll happen is later on, if I miss it, I'm going to have to come back in and restart. Ooh, all those hairs got picked at once, maybe. Something's weird there. I'm going to let go of Shift and hold Control and Z to undo that. I think I might have clicked the white space right there. So now I'm going to hold Shift again and go back and click these again. There was something weird going on. I think I accidentally hit the white. And when I went to fill this, because you're going to see I'm going to fill this with black soon. When I went to fill this, it would have all been um, black in the stomach and the face and everything else that's connected. Got these little, got the nip, the mushrooms. These are like little, they could be boils or they could be mushrooms. Uh, it's up to you. I'm going to make my mushrooms just so I have a little more continuity in my drawing. Be careful. Too much color makes your, um, too many different colors makes it hard to read your character. They should be easily readable. Like we should look at it and just be like, understand everything that's going on instantly. I am not going to do the mini gator right now. I know it's part of my uh, brief. And I will get to it, but for this video, I'm just going to focus on my swamp creature. I'm using the middle of this plus at the end of the wand to select. If something's too small, my decision is to either skip it. Uh, we got to control Z that. Uh, we got to control Z again. Well, I'm. I am hopeful that it worked, but I think somewhere I might have accidentally messed this up. That's okay. Keep going. It's a lot, but in the long run, it'll pay off. So I'm selecting all these lines. Photoshop, if you have it, one nice thing is you can go to right click when you have the magic wand and say select similar and it should select everything that is black at the same time automatically much much faster much much easier okay check it one last time i got it all 
Okay, so now down here is the layers menu, and I'm going to create a new layer. This double sheet is a duplicate layer. The plus is a new layer. I just want a brand new clean layer. And I can see here there's a little checkerboard pattern. That means it's totally translucent, which means uh, transparent, which means it's see through. So that whole layer right now is just empty, see through nothingness versus the layer that I can see has paper and pencil and ink. So what I want to do is now I'm active on this transparent layer. Now I'm active on the paper layer. I want to be active on the transparent layer and I'm going to get a brush. And I find this works better with the brush than the paint bucket. And I'm going to press the bracket key to make the brush bigger. Um, and if I don't know what a bracket key is, the size is also here. And I'm just going to paint over the whole thing. Oh, well, I have brown on. So this little black and white box, I can click that to get it black and white. Yours should already start that way. I can also flip this, click this arrow to flip flop my colors. I want it black. So I'm going to just kind of go over the whole thing where I want it. Make sure you get everything. Don't miss a thing. And I'm going to let go. Then I'm going to hide my paper layer. Um, good. And what should be left is just your ink lines and a transparent background. I'm going to go to select, deselect. Okay, so I kind of missed some. You could see the ink's not so black up there. So I'm going to control Z and I'm going to go back through and darken it all over again, all of it, just in case I missed anything else. And probably I didn't really miss it. It was just some of the load time took it out. So select, deselect. Select, deselect. Okay, good. And it's still not getting my lines up there. So that's weird. Maybe my lines weren't that cleanly selected in the first place. So I can actually go back to this paper layer and I can try and select them again and see if I can't get these lines a little crisper. I think this might work. Go back to this layer and use the brush to add more black to that and then hide this layer again. And go to select, deselect. Now I've got uh, mostly good clean lines there. There's a little bit, but that's okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another new layer down here at the bottom by pressing the plus. Now this layer is on top of my lines. I don't want that. I'm gonna grab it and drag it down. Um, let's see. Sorry, all these programs do things a little different. You have to grab it in just the right spot to be able to move it. I've got my brush tool. I'm just using the standard brush they have. Um, I'm making sure the opacity is up. I'm making sure this eraser button's not clicked. I'm making sure that the size is good. Right now the size is not good. So I can kind of hit the brackets to get that size where I want it. It's a little too small. I'll figure that out. I got to pick a color for my guy, and this black and white up here is the colors I'm using. So I'm going to click that. I already did a green one, so I don't know. Maybe I'll try and do like a brown, like a muddy one now. Um, let's see if I could get a good color. I click on it. I don't quite like it. I wish it was a little more uh, neutral. So I'm going to kind of move it around here until I get a color I like. Move it up like this. So I find the color that I'm feeling good about. Say okay. If you have a drawing tablet or like a something to go along with yours or a stylus and a touch screen, definitely use it now. I am right now just using the mouse, though I have a tablet. And I'm gonna go and color the perimeter. And actually, I'm not gonna be careful about it. <clears throat> I know. And this is on its own layer. Do not do this on the same layer as the lines or you'll completely obliterate the lines. Sometimes it takes a while to catch up and sometimes it never catches up. So I'm gonna make sure I get everything colored with this poo color all the way to the tips of his toes. 
Now I'm going to switch back to making my line layer active. And I'm going to get the magic one. And I'm going to click all the space. Okay, so wait. I've got to, on Krita, it's a little weird. So I've got to hide the layer uh, and then select, deselect. So I've got to hide the layer with the color on it. So I'm going to click all this space around the guy, hold shift, put the empty space that's cut off in his armpit. None of the rest of his spaces are cut off except for right here between him and, and if i if that's hard for you to get that little spots like that you're going to need to zoom in okay so while that's selected now i'm going to select the layer with brown on it and i'm going to make it visible and then i'm just going to hit the delete key oh something happened i'll tell you what happened what do you think happened here what happened here was that my line right here is open so that the color was able to spill out, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to have to hand color this one. So I'm going to get the brush, make it small enough, and now I'll be careful. Notice how the other time I wasn't careful, but I was able to get a lot done quickly. That's important. So when I deleted this color, see how the toenail was like cut off from that part I deleted? The outside part. So the toenail was fine. Up in the top right corner, there's a little bit that's fine. So I'm going to kind of click and drag my finger around with the mouse. I am using a finger pad mouse. Okay, so I got the whole thing colored. Awesome. But I don't want all of it the same color. So what I want to do is I want to figure out a way to color on it without coloring the blank background. And they've already figured that out for me. There is um, a few different things here, including this little button. It looks like the transparent pixels. If I click on it, it's locked. Once I do that, I can pick a new color. So let's make his, um, let's make his loincloth here green. So when I paint, it won't go anywhere where there's no color already. It'll only go on the color because I click that little lock button right here. And that's called locking the alpha layer or the alpha channel. So that doesn't allow me to color where it's transparent. It will allow me to color anywhere it's brown. So I still have to be careful down here where I'm near the um, leg. And now I don't have to be careful because there's no leg over here. And then over here. And once it's colored uh, continuously, a thing I can do, oops, I'll show you how to fix that in a sec. A thing I can do is I could just change the color of it uh, pretty easily and I'll show you how to do that too. So first things first, um, some of you may try and erase. And this uh, program, the erase tool is the brush tool. So you just gotta click that eraser and then it's erasing and unclick it and then it's painting. So if I was to erase this, what'll happen is it erases everything, including the brown. And then I won't even be able to paint on it because I've got the alpha layer locked. That would be bad. So what I need to do is get this brown back. But I don't even remember which brown it is. Well, over here, um, there's this tool that looks like an eyedropper called the color selection tool. And I'm going to click that, and I'm going to click this brown, and I'm going to get the brush tool back. And where's the brush tool? Why is it not working? Okay, sometimes it takes a little while to catch up. So I'm going to paint that back on. And that way I've got it. Now, the other thing I said I was going to show you was how to change this color real quick. So I'm going to hide my lines. And I'm going to get this bucket, and I'm going to pick the color I want. So say I wanted it to be more sagey like this. I'll say OK, and I'm just going to paint bucket. Oh, I got everything. So uh, I think those colors might be too close together, or the settings on my paint bucket might be that it's allowing me to get everything. So that is an issue. I will have to play with that and let you know how we can fix that. Um, later so anyway 
I guess I'd have to just repaint it with the brush at this point until I figure that out. But I'm going to keep moving forward. So I got this sagey green here, and I'm going to actually use that on some of these vines. These vine shapes. Overpainted that a little. And if you would rather do this on the, your phone, I will also be putting a, together a video for how to use Ibis Paint. Um, I'm not sure what program or what phones it's available for. I know it's definitely available for iPhone. There is more than one version of it. They're not all free. So make sure that you choose the one that's right for you. Okay. Um, I painted these kind of sloppy. So I need to get that eyedropper. I need to get this color. And then I need to go back to the brush. And I can actually just hit the B key on the keyboard. And that will take me to the brush too. And I can hit E on the for the eraser. Oops. Kind of ruined that whole thing. It's a good idea when you're using the brush and you do some stuff you like to unclick because then instead of undoing everything, including the stuff you like, it'll only undo the last thing that you did from the click. But if you hold it down and you just keep going, it's going to undo everything, including the good stuff. So every once in a while, unclick just to kind of lock in the parts that you like. All right. So I don't like the way those things end and transition. I still have the brown on. I kind of need a soft brush or a different brush. So I'm gonna click on this brush thing here. And this is a really confusing format. They, they don't have like as many, just like preset brushes to pick from, which causes problems. I'm gonna click on, let's see, softness and I'm going to leave the strength at 100%. And I'm going to say save new brush and save. And this should give me a soft edge and it's not. So again, it, these brushes, sometimes you got to play with them. Oh, here, I'll use this. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to actually go here. I think this is an airbrush effect. Digital sketch. Oh, here's the airbrush right here. Okay. So I'm going to use this. And I just overdid that. So I'm going to reduce the brush size. And I'm going to just kind of spray out these ends until I can't see that hard transition anymore. And they just kind of faded. Just like a faded transition. Um, might even get the brush a little smaller to start it. Just so they fade in and don't just instantly stop. I don't love those colors either. I feel like I made a bad color choice. So now I'm gonna go through and color everything. Get these white eyes. Oh, I don't want that airbrush anymore. So I'm gonna click. I'm going to click the brush thing right here. Okay. White. His teeth, I think I'm going to, I did them yellow in the other one. I think I'm going to keep doing them yellow. But not like crazy yellow, like a whitish yellow. And I don't need to be clean around the black because the black's on top. As I put that layer up on top. So I can mess around without worrying about that color being um, being the exact shape. I can just kind of paint it on real loose. So he needs some of these boys taken care of. So I'm going to go in here maybe with some kind of dusky maroon. Paint that bad boy there. Paint this guy here. Okay, 
I'm almost done with the general flatting and flatting is just coloring uh, the big flat colors. So he's also got these shelf mushrooms on him. I'm gonna paint those like a pale gray color, something like that maybe. The shelf mushrooms are kind of the ones that are like uh, shaped like a petal or an oyster. Okay, I messed that up. Every program's got something different. So um, one of the good things about this, I just noticed that the key for the selection tool is B, so, or P, sorry, P. Um, so picker is probably what it's short for. So I could just hit that P button and then I can select and I can hit the B key on the keyboard and get back to the brush. So I can just kind of jump back and forth. So these mushrooms, I am gonna paint them red, not too dark, not too bright though, because I want them to be um, a little bit of a darker red, kind of an orangey red here. Because I, if I start putting like patterns on these or the brightest color on these, these are gonna be the most important thing in the picture, and I don't necessarily want that. I, I want them to be supporting my character, not taking over my character. And I have to think sometimes about uh, color and how color can uh, enhance, but color can also take over or make things confusing. So these, I'm going to pretend these are all cat mark, uh, mushroom marks mushrooms notice how uh i didn't get that little spot so i'm going to undo the alpha lock here so i get that spot over painted a little so i'm gonna hit the e key for the eraser and i'm gonna hit the e key to take the eraser off and then i'm gonna alpha lock again It's a lot to do, guys, for sure. Especially if you've got a real complicated character with lots of stuff going on. But in the end, the look, the professionalism of the look, the digital coloring is not to be underestimated. It makes a huge difference. Uh, even in the derpiest of drawings can start to look more professional if you are coloring on a computer and you get that clean color vibe that you get. So finishing these caps. Notice how I'm not making every single thing a different color. I'm kind of focusing on simple color palette. I'm going to hit P again to pick that color here. Then I'm going to click on it and I'm going to actually just kind of darken it ever so slightly. I'm going to hit the B key. I'm going to use this for these stems. There's three stems, these two. And then there's a stem on his shoulder. And those are all the stems. Notice I can kind of like be a little loose uh, because of the alpha lock. So now I've got him all flatted out. He's all uh, colored. There's no shading though. And it's just all the same. So I'm going to hide my line layer because the selection tool works better that way. And I'm gonna magic wand his eye. And then I am going to take a red color or a pinkish red color. And I'm gonna get that airbrush back. Oh, that was here, right? I gotta be on the brush tool, I guess, to select the brushes. So I'm gonna click this airbrush and I'm gonna make this kind of small, zoom into his eye. That's another great thing about the digital coloring is I could really zoom in, fine tune some stuff. And I'm just gonna come in with this red, pink color around the outside. And I didn't like that, so I'm gonna give it another go. Okay. And I'm going to get the wand again. 
or the contiguous selection tool is what they call it. The brush, kind of go around the outside edge here. All right, let's click on our lines just to see what that did. So I just gave it some, notice how it was pretty aggressive on the, um, before I added the lines in, but once the lines are there, it's kind of subtle. It's a nice subtle effect. So I can use that to make some color choices and effects. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is the shadows. And I'm going to do all the shadows at once. So what I'm going to do is on this layer, I'm going to magic wand all around him. And I'm going to hold shift. And I'm going to magic wand his armpit. That's just what I did before. Uh, when I deleted the brown, remember his leg got deleted, but now his leg won't get deleted because there's color there. Hold shift and I'm going to click here. Now, I've only selected the background, the stuff that isn't colored, but what I want to do is select what is colored. So I'm going to go select, invert selection, and now he's only colored. I'm going to create a new layer here. You see that? And on this layer, um, Every layer's got a mode, and this layer is set to normal. That's the default. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to choose multiply. And then every layer's got an opacity, um, and I want to mess with that opacity too. And the opacity is right below where it said multiply. And I'm going to turn that way down to 34, 30, somewhere in there. I'm going to get this brush. Um, it's still set to the airbrush. I might use that. But to be honest with you, I prefer the brush style for shadows with a character like this with a hard line shadow. Um, more realistic characters, I might get into something where the shadow fades out and I've got a, you know, a backlight shadow and it's not a crisp hard line. But for this kind, I kind of like that crisp hard line. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to get myself a purpley gray dark color, maybe a little blue. A little um, gray, a little dark, and I'm going to say OK. Now this color, I'm just going to paint right on. And the thing about painting this on is right now I have a selection, don't I? Oh, what happened to my selection? I'm going to go to select, or reselect. I don't know why that happened. So I'm going to paint this on. It'll only stay where the selection is. It will shift the colors that are there to make them slightly darker and more purple, um, but only slightly. The opacity can be changed to mess with that. And this is how I'm going to do all my shading quickly and at once in its own layer with a selection tool. So I can only color where there's stuff already. I can only color where there's already color. Change, mess with my brush size. I can just erase some of this while I'm going. I'll just hit E, use the brackets to make my brush smaller. If you don't know what brackets are, I just quit. I mean, um, brackets are the squared off parentheses. I hit E again, come back with the purple. Look at the edge of my line. It's kind of chunky and fat. If I hit the E key, I can kind of like reshape the ends so they're kind of pointed. So I got a little more natural shape to them. I don't want to, have to just leave them looking like chunky lines. Hit the E key again. Get my mood shaded down. My second chin. Maybe even my belly button needs a little fine tune the whole thing like this. Get in here around the eyes. Actually, notice how I'm actually shading on the eye as well as on the uh, bottom of the brow all at once. I can go back through with fine tune some of this, get close, really get close and fine tune it um, as I go. I'm not going to do that for the video because it will take me longer. And I want you to kind of just uh, see how to do it and explore. But just don't forget that navigator tool. 
Notice how I'm always going back and erasing and cleaning those lines. This is awkward here, so I'm gonna kind of smooth this more. Get it up here a little smoother so it doesn't just abruptly stop. Make it small. Right of that. And sometimes these programs are a little quirky. You try it, it doesn't work, just try it again. Um, but other times you might be stuck and you might have to reach out for some help. Need to clean this up down here. Shouldn't be quite so much on there, I think. I mean, the belly is over it, but I feel like if it's too shaded, it won't be confusing. About the color, maybe bring some of the leg back up. The kneecap might catch a little more light, something like that. So now I've got this guy all colored. And I want to just put a solid background. So I'm going to say select, deselect, because I can't color anywhere that's not selected if the selection tool is on. And I'm going to hide everything. And all the way at the bottom, oops, all the way at the bottom, I'm going to create a new layer. And if you don't create it at the bottom, you have to drag it to the bottom. I'm going to get this paint bucket here, and I'm going to pick a gray color. And I'm going to go pretty dark, because I think it looks good. And I'm going to click that there. And then I'm going to reveal everything. And I'm going to say file. Oh, you know what? One more thing. I'm going to create another layer on top of this. Get my purpley color back. Or a purpley color back. I'm just going to say, put it down here. Put a little ground shadow. That's a little too purple. But I'll mess with it. We'll see what happens. Okay, change it to multiply, mess with its opacity. We got something more reasonable for a shadow. Okay, and then when I'm all done, I'm going to say file, save as. I'm going to make sure it says JPEG or PNG there, and then I'm going to save it. Uh, no, I don't want to replace it, so I'm going to call it I'm going to call it Swamp Creature. I think because I'm on the save button, it's telling me. Um, swamp Guy. Should have, should have called it Swamp Dad. Trying to leave the quality uh, around 80%. Stay okay. And then you're done. And you won't turn in this. You'll turn in the JPEG that you just saved. Okay?